you can tell it's getting warm because all the machines come out so um i hope you can hear me okay over the chainsaw and the power washer <laughs> going on in other people's gardens so um i thought in this video so i'm starting to gradually move things out of the greenhouse and you saw me put up the Cerinthi outside in my previous video and I'm going to be gradually doing these jobs over the coming week. That clears me up space to sow more flowers that I haven't sowed before and that now uh, we're reaching the ideal temperature. It's March 15th, it's uh, well over 60 so it's almost heading up to 70 here at around lunchtime on March the 15th inside the greenhouse so I thought I was going to sow um, two flowers today well one is a flower ideal as a cut flower let me just put my glasses on so I can see um, this marigold here burning embers and it's also a good companion plant for tomatoes and is a cottage garden plant so for me that works threefold because I have a cottage garden I am growing tomatoes and the traditional English cottage garden actually was based around this kind of companion planting, which was why you would always see nasturtiums around cabbages, for instance, because the nasturtiums attract all the caterpillars. Uh, they absolutely love the nasturtium leaves and of course that kept the caterpillars off your salad crops. So this one can be companion planted with tomato. Excuse the fingers, I've already been making mud pies today. So that's that one. And then the other one I'm gonna do is the is a another cottage garden plant. Looks great uh, in containers uh, as a sort of a green foliage. It's a very, uh, that pale bright spring green. And then it's, you know, you could plant something taller. So you could have it um, around a pot let's so you have it kind of it grows quite tall but have it around then you have something taller above a statement plant taller above there goes the power washer again so um, i will be starting those and as you can see here they need 18 to 22 to germinate in a propagator so i'm going to use these bottles as the propagator for when the seeds are small and we can see that we are definitely 18 in that zone, 18 to 20 in the greenhouse. So it's actually perfect timing. And same again here with, these actually don't need it even quite, they have a wider range, 15 to 20, 60 to 60 H. And we're regularly getting into those temperatures now. So these should, in theory, germinate pretty well. So let's get on with that. And I'll show you just how I make my propagator. Uh, just with water bottles and then I will keep them somewhere in here. <laughs> could actually even just hang them really from here. Uh, but um, let's get on with that anyway now. Right. Also you just take the labels off and the lids, they don't need the lids because you do need some kind of airflow. Um, you don't want to suffocate them and make them rot with too much moisture. And then you cut the bottom off. Um, I mean, I'm not going to go into big detail about this because it's it's not rocket science. <laughs> you cut the bottom off. If, I usually find if you make a hole first, then you can kind of whiz around with the scissors. And then you have to make some drainage holes too. And if you are going to hang them up, um, as I do later, you'll see at the end, stay tuned to the end for that. Uh, you need to puncture little holes in the side as well. Then if you put a little pleat in the top half of the bottle, it'll fit nicely back inside the bottle as the lid of the propagator. Then I mix up my usual um, recipe for uh, seed starting compost, which is basically just sharp sand uh, diluted with uh, some compost. And the sharp sand just keeps it open so that those extremely delicate uh, starter roots can work their way through to the nutrients. Then obviously water it, make sure it's nice and moist before you use it because it's much easier to use moist compost than try to uh, wet it after you've 
uh, sown the seeds which are extremely delicate. Then tap down but don't compact the soil. You just want to get rid of any air pockets and have a level surface for sowing on. Right, so here they are. Let's go first with the marigold. I forgot to bring myself some uh, extra compost to cover uh, the seeds with. But let's go anyway. Didn't bring the. Oh, look at that. I wasn't expecting them to be right there. Anyway, that's good because we can spread them out really well, which means we don't have overcrowding. I thought they'd be in a bag. I think I broke that one, look. I may do another pot of these then. There we go. I think there's enough in there. I can get them out when they're germinating. So I think I will do another pot of those. But for now, let's just do that one. And then it says cover. I'll just drop one. Oh. Pull that back over without losing any there. I'll just pinch a bit from here actually because it said cover with about, I don't know, just a little bit anyway. There we go. I just need a little bit of darkness maybe to get them going. And that's those. I need to label them. It's actually boiling in here, you know. I've got about um, two jumpers on and a t-shirt and I am way too hot. So, there we go. That's those done. Let's do these ones next, which are the Alchemilla Ladies Mantle. Perfect, I ideal temperature. Three millimeters deep, it does say. Really small. Whoa. When I have them like that, what I tend to do is, let's just move that one over. I don't know which one is best for you to see, actually. Is it this one? And what I tend to do is I just get my finger and I just, I can always say scarifying, it's not actually scarifying them. It's kind of more exfoliating the surface and that way I just cover them as well, slightly. And there, and there, and there. just push them in, I don't need an extra layer. Push them under the surface. And by using my finger, I've spread them more evenly around. Okay, that's those done. Uh, all we need to do now is put the lids on, which we've put this pleat in, so we can just push those down. And that, ah, there we go. It's done. And when I run out of lollipop sticks, sometimes I use, um, I just use, I'll put this one up here, just labels like that. Oh no, that's the wrong one. Wait, which one is which? Yeah, no, that is the right one because I moved them, didn't I? They're going to be inside, so they'll stay dry. There we go. All done. Finish this work. video uh, where I did my, um, <laughs> I did these little bottles look on my shelf here. I put these two beams in when I built the greenhouse so that I could, you know, use this, the up high space so that all the space is being used. And I was realizing I was just running out of this space here and it's not getting much light. Not that new seeds need a huge deal of light, but I realized, ah, They'll get the heat, the radiant heat rising from the seated heat bed. And of course, this is what the beam, this is what I put the beam in for. So I just manipulated these little propagators that I just showed you, put some more holes in here and a knot inside before I added the soil and then sowed a second sowing. And I, when the flowers are finished in here, I'm gonna put all my tomatoes and things, when things can start going out after the frosts have passed, 
and I can fill all these beams up with my potted up tomatoes and aubergines and courgettes. So it's going to have a second phase as a vegetable garden, I guess. But anyway, since I was planting and I said my jumper was killing me, I was so hot. <laughs> I've got all these jumpers on. Look at the temperature in here. It's over 70 now. 20, what is that? 22, 24 degrees C. So pretty darn boiling. I'm going to go and have a shower and take a layer off. All right, see you again in my next video. Hope that all helped. Thanks for watching. Bye.